Today I have the new Sketchboard Pro designed to make your iPad drawing experience life-changing. But is it really a life-changing experience? We're going to go over it in just a sec. The box it comes with does the job, although I would have hoped it would have been better reinforced. Since the Sketchboard Pro is extremely solid, it's unlikely to get damaged in shipping anyway. Contents in the box are short and sweet, basically comprised of the Sketchboard Pro itself, which is already put together, and an instruction manual. Inside the box is some custom graphics, and back to the packaging itself. These guys are all into go green and, you know, planting trees and stuff, so it probably explains why the box is what it is. Now looking at the back of the device first, we can see there's a groove cut out for the iPad charging cable. There's not really much to say about this except if you use a third party cable, you may find that groove is a little tight. The default Apple cable fits well and there's little clips to sort of hold it in place. The sketchboard has four legs in the back. They're made of plastic but the outside is covered with a thick rubber. When you extend them out all the way, there's a slight click so that you know it's in the right position. There's a little more plastic in there than I'd like. I worry a little bit that it might wear down or break, but so far in the last month or so that I've had it, I haven't any problems. Now there's four legs here for a good reason. You were able to put the Sketchboard Pro in both portrait mode and landscape and completely flip them around depending on what kind of configuration you like. I'll show you why that's important in a minute. Now there's also a couple of cutouts worth mentioning. One is the obvious camera cutout. The other is the middle of the Sketchboard Pro is actually cut out as well. I'm not sure why they did that. If it was for heat reasons or something else, but sometimes it could be problematic if you have it on your legs and you kind of knock the iPad out from the other direction. Finally, in all four corners, you can see the little stoppers to make sure no matter what position you put it in, the other end won't move as well. I'm John. When I'm not winning the WWE Championship, I do reviews and tutorials for things used in the creative process. Now remember who you're supposed to be. By clicking that sub, clicking that bell, dropping a like, dropping a comment, so you won't miss anything. Moving on to the front of the Sketchboard Pro as I thread this iPhone charging cable through the aforementioned cutout, you'll notice immediately how solid the unit is. The bezel, if you will, is made of a hard plastic that's not likely to get damaged unless you do something stupid and take a flamethrower or something like that to it. The insert itself where the iPad goes is made of sort of like a rubber material. And the metal you see there inside the insert is a magnet meant to hold the iPad in place, not only to keep it from moving, but also in case you decide to carry it around by the handle, which is the cutout you see on the top of the Sketchboard Pro. Now putting the actual iPad into the Sketchboard Pro can be a little tricky because it's meant to be tight. Now I'm going to show you how to adjust this thing later in the video, but for now, without any kind of adjustments to the insert itself, don't be surprised if it's very, very tight. Admittedly, mine was so tight, I thought maybe they sent me the wrong one. It might explain as well why some of the reviewers were claiming if you held it straight up, carrying it by the handle, the iPad itself would fall out. Again, once I go through adjustments, I think I solved both those issues. I've set it up in a portrait position and immediately there were a couple things that stood out. Number one, depending on when your hand is, if you're right-handed, that handle could get in the way a little bit. Meaning as you slide your hand up and down as you're drawing or painting or whatever, your wrist is kind of brushing up against that gap. The second thing is you got to make sure the charging cable itself doesn't get pinched or get caught under the weight of the Sketchboard Pro itself. <laughs> now it turns out if you're right-handed, both situations are easy to remedy, you just flip the thing around. And while that does place the charging cable at the top now of the Sketchboard Pro in this portrait configuration, it winds up fixing both problems and honestly is not a big deal. The benefit here is that the Sketchboard Pro allows you access to every single corner of the iPad because you now have that bezel to lean your hand on. This is when in practice, you first start to see the benefit of the Sketchboard Pro to begin with. Yes it is. It says my name on it. Champ doesn't have time for your questions right now. Champ is on YouTube. I found the best way to get comfortable with the Sketchboard Pro was to treat it like a proper drafting table. Meaning, with those legs extended, you really need to be right up on it to avoid any Mac or neck issues, just as you would any proper art table. I found this especially important because I'm a shorter guy, and when my arm was extended the way it is here, I found myself stretching a bit to reach the top of that iPad in portrait position. You get used to it, especially once you get used to the benefits of drawing on it, you really don't want to draw on the iPad without it, because you realize how much real estate of the actual iPad screen that you're losing because there's nowhere to rest your hands. 
The same applies here when I put it back in its proper landscape mode as it was originally designed. Now if you notice, the insert that actually holds the iPad is not directly in the middle of the SketchBoard Pro. The bezel at the top, where the cutout for the actual handle is, is much thinner than the bezel towards the bottom. So if you can't quite get that seating position right, or you got stubby arms like me, you can flip the thing around and you'll notice the iPad is much closer to you now, mitigating the need to stretch your arms out so much, which would contribute to poor posture. Now for me, I actually ordered the full kit with the carrying bag and all that, so I at least wanted to show because I didn't see it in any other reviews. It's sort of like one of those portfolio carrying bags. If we lift the bag up, revealing the bottom, you can see the first pocket, there's one zipper there. Laying it back down, the flap of the bag is held down by Velcro, and there are two pockets, no zippers or anything, to hold various kinds of stuff, notebooks or whatever. The part that actually holds the SketchBoard Pro has this funky little zipper flap. I'm not sure why they extended it the way they did. Maybe it's just to make it easier or they found it more durable or something like that. But you can see it fits exactly perfect in there. As it should, it was designed to hold it. When we look inside, we can see it has those same printed designs that were on the box, but inside the bag itself. Another couple of small pockets to hold various smaller things. And there's one more padded pocket, which I'd say is about 8x10, roughly. The bag is going to do its job. It wasn't that expensive, but what really would have made it better is if the pockets had Velcro on them or something to close them. Additionally, I'm not sure if they designed it having the iPad in the SketchBoard Pro itself. Because there really isn't much padding, for example, like you would get with like a laptop bag or something like that. You ruined it. You get to ask the champ one question. No, I don't want to go on vacation. Because there's people there. Fine. Ask the champ your second question. Where would you like to go on vacation? North Dakota? What do you think, I'm stupid? What the hell would I want to go to another country for? I mean, honestly. Now, this is actually meant to come apart, these inserts, because the SketchBoard Pro is designed for future compatibility in case you happen to get a new iPad. So in other words, you can get a new insert and then you just remove some screws, put the new insert in and you should be good to go. So after I whack out these six screws, I'm gonna show you how this thing is supposed to work. Now you see this piece of metal? This is the magnet. The magnet is designed to be flush against the back of the iPad. That's what holds it in place. So when you're carrying it around by the handle, it's not supposed to fall out. I think one of the reasons you guys are experiencing the iPad kind of falling out when you're holding it by the handle is because you're not really getting a clean connection to that magnet because of the everything's so tight. Yeah, it's holding it in there, but it's not flush against that magnet and that's why it tends to pop out. The solution to this is easier than you think and probably only takes 10-15 minutes. So this is the actual rubber insert. You can see the six screw holes and what's meant to happen is you put the screw through the rubber insert through the metal magnet and that's supposed to keep everything in place and it does. The issue is the rubber is kind of pliable meaning it won't break but it's easy to manipulate. I think what the problem is with some of these thinner iPads there's really no uniform way because some of them were prone to bending and expanding and things like that, I think that's why we're starting to see this problem. You'll start by putting the rubber insert back into the SketchBoard Pro. Now put your Apple Pencil in there where it belongs because it's going to serve as a guide as we adjust this. The initial adjustment is very important. Once again, it's leaning over so we know it's completely off at this point. You see that tug in the corner? Once I pulled on that, you notice the pen went straight up. That's obviously what we want. Don't worry about the Apple Pencil being straight just yet. We need to put the magnet back in. The holes on the metal magnet are sort of recessed into the rubber insert itself. That's what kind of holds it all together. And we're going to get these holes lined up here. And you're going to press down just a little bit with a little bit of pressure. We're going to use that rightmost middle screw because we need an anchor to make our initial adjustments. Now I have to apologize that my arm is in the way. This was a little bit difficult to film, but what I'm doing that you can't see with my right hand is I'm pulling where the charging cable would come in to the right. In other words, as I'm putting that screw in, I'm making sure I'm pulling the entire insert as far to the right as I can, again, to serve for that anchor that we're gonna need to make the rest of our adjustments. And we're gonna move counterclockwise. And you can see using the Apple Pencil as a guide, I'm now pulling into the corner. 
Fortunately, I have that first screw we put in as an anchor, so nothing's gonna move. I'm free to put as much tension as I want to make sure I sh get as much of a stretch out of this thing as I can. It's made of rubber, believe me, you're not gonna break it. Now we're gonna move all the way clockwise to about six o'clock. We're really shoring up that right side of the Sketchpad Pro. It's a little off camera once again because I was trying to zoom into the screws and it was just really hard to get everything without my arm being in a way. But I'm doing the same thing as I did with the top right hand corner. I am pulling on the bottom right hand corner with as much tension as I can to pull it all the way to the right. And then I'm getting that screw in there real good. At this point the order is not important but I'm just going to leapfrog to the left here because it's a little bit easier. Although now because the right side is shored up you are now going to pull to the bottom left hand corner all the way stretch as far as you can and then bang that screw in. Circling around this time clockwise. We're going to hit that middle screw. Again, you can see where my thumb is, pulling as far left as I can to get that screw in. You don't really have to worry about that camera cutout. It's big enough where any adjustments you're going to make are not going to mess around with it. However, pulling diagonally, upper left, we're now going to get ready to set our next screw. Now you see the difference. Everything is completely perfect. And now I'm going to show you how to actually put the iPad in the Sketchboard Pro. You're going to start at that top left corner slightly pressing it in, securing the top edge of the iPad first. From there, just working around the edges. If you did this right, look how easy this went in. It's completely, perfectly flat. My iPad pencil is perfectly straight. This is exactly what I wanted. The final test here is look, I've got this thing practically upside down. That iPad is not going anywhere because it's completely flush against that magnet. If you're still having a problem, or it's still a little tight for your comfort, you can go around doing the same thing with the screws all over again. In other words, go all the way back to that right middle one, pull them out, and then completely pull all the way to the right. Do it again. Work counterclockwise, and then hit those ones on the left. Keep going around and around until you get the fit that you're looking for. Now, something I've shared a little bit is I've got some health stuff with my neck and my back and all kinds of things. So you'll notice I was able to lay down and comfortably rest my head against some pillows, uh, supporting my neck without having to bend it over so much, which for me just causes my body all kinds of different levels of melt, muscle spasms and the like. My elbows are pretty well supported on the couch, meaning I didn't have any problems drawing or didn't experience any kind of arm fatigue because I didn't have any kind of armrests underneath me. So I was pleasantly surprised that this use case that I didn't expect would actually apply to me. Now, if you're a working artist today, you really need to invest in one of these ergonomic chairs, especially if you're going to be sitting there all day. But again, if you got health stuff after a while, sitting and everything can cause you some kind of levels of pain. Once again, I found the Sketchboard Pro really came in handy here. If you notice, I'm able to rest it against the armrests with nothing but the knee of my crossed over leg supporting the Sketchboard Pro. I'm able to get a few hours of work done here without experiencing any significant pain. Most notably, my back is supported and you can see my neck is supported as well. I'm looking down using my eyes as opposed to bending my neck over. All in all, I found myself using both of these affirmation configurations a lot more than I would have thought of. And it really capped off what I thought was an excellent experience. So listen, I'm glad I took as long as I did doing a review on this item. Sometimes you just have to spend a lot of time with it because initially you may have some false impressions. But I can tell you that this completely changed the way I use my iPad for art. I am extremely happy with it. Uh, I'm behind these guys all the way. And what I found out was uh, they actually even support the brand new iPad Pros, the 2021s that just came out. They're only slightly thicker and actually use the same insert. The fact that you can upgrade this over time really adds value to the purchase to begin with because you're only buying a new insert and then changing that out as Apple comes out with different iPads and changes the configuration and such. Anyway, if you like this review, check these two guys out over here. One is on the paper-like screen protector I use to give that pencil-like feel. And then also my review of the 2018 iPad Pro. The drawing experience is basically the same. I'll check you guys out in the next one.